Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. I'm your host, Bob Powell, and this episode marks the beginning of our exclusive coverage of the Bundy Brush War trial here in Portland, Oregon, during which the first eight of 46 defendants who are charged with crimes allegedly committed in Bunkerville, Nevada over two years ago and in Burns, Oregon earlier this year will begin tomorrow. Hey guys, Gavin here, and I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on what's going on in Oregon, talk about what we're dealing with and how you guys can help this week. I actually did talk to Ammon Bundy today, and he is in, in really good spirits. He sounded really good. You know, I mean, he's, a, he's in a very tough situation, and he's struggling, but his, his mental spirits seemed good, and he knows that these courts are, are corrupt and that they're lawless, but at the same time, there's, there's a higher king, and we do the best we can. We stand up for what's right, we love our neighbor, and we stand up. But listen, there's a real problem here because you look around Oregon and stuff like that, and, and most of the 3% of the militia groups, they are no-shows down there in Oregon. You know, there's people showing up, some of the women in particular are showing up down there, they're trying to be supportive, they're trying to help people. Where's the 3% in the militia? Welcome back to The Truth is Viral Live. My name is Bob Powell. I'm standing outside the federal courthouse in Portland, Oregon, where the day one of the Bundy trial has just commenced. Uh, first thing first, uh, Ryan Bundy's motions, all of them that he had, had filed with the court have been dismissed by Judge Anna Brown. Uh, and that was took just a few minutes, basically. She just kind of, whoop, that's all you get. And uh, then she spent the rest of the morning, though, admonishing federal prosecutors who could not account for extra copies of private Facebook messages and all other electronic communications that had found their way out of the government's hands and into the hands of defense attorneys and other people that had no right to view privileged and non-responsive information. Uh, a total of 23 accounts, 5 disks, 3 terabytes of information from Facebook accounts uh, were was sent out to uh, these parties and 11 of them were not segregated. In, in other words, if uh, under the terms of the government's warrant, any information that was, say, like a privileged communication between Ammon Bundy and an attorney, or uh, other information that was non-responsive to the warrant, like uh, what do you have for dinner, or I love mom's apple pie, all that stuff was supposed to be taken out of this information that was sent out to defense attorneys and, and witnesses, but it wasn't. And uh, so David Fry's lawyer, Per Olson, filed a motion to suppress all of this Facebook evidence. And, and uh, over the past several months, the government's been given several opportunities to uh, explain to Judge Anna Brown exactly where that evidence came from and who got it. But they have not been able to do that. And uh, all of this information was, was sent to defense attorneys defendants and witnesses in this case. Plus, they were posted on the U.S. Attorney's server where any government lawyer, whether they worked on the Bundy case or not, could view it. And so, you know, just like Hillary Clinton, the government lost control of privileged information and put it out for unauthorized persons to see. On July 1st, the government finally sent the, the redacted accounts to defense attorneys that had, had of the Facebook Posts that had been non-responsive and contained privileged information, and uh, and but the, but you know that's like closing the barn door a month and a half after the horse has gotten out. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, the government summary was this, and I quote: "The FBI did exactly what it was supposed to do in accordance with the warrant to seize the information in the Facebook accounts." Uh, end quote. Government lawyers were never. never to privileged or non no, I'm sorry, it's still a quote. Government lawyers were never exposed to privileged or non-responsive information. The government acted in good faith. Uh, rebutting 
Matt Per Olson got up and, and he said that on August 3rd, he had alerted the government to his receipt of privileged information to which he was not entitled. And he also pointed out the fact that eight law enforcement aid officers from agencies other than the Federal Bureau of Investigation, including local sheriff's departments and, and, and local police departments, got copies of all this privileged information. It, it's tainted. As a matter of fact, uh, the team that's to scrub about this information is called a, uh, what was it called, Deb? Called the, uh, filter team. the filter team. But funny, uh, funny enough, Judge Anna Brown spent half the morning calling them the taint team. I swear, it's true. And she finally corrected herself and, you know, me and Deborah sitting there down and said, nope, taint's about right. So, uh, uh, per Olson, David Fry's attorney, filed a motion to suppress all of those, all the information uh, that the government sees from those Facebook accounts. But, uh, you know, those eight agents that I was talking about just a minute ago from the various law enforcement agencies that received this privileged information, uh, they're still in possession of that evidence. They still have it. They know they're not supposed to have it, and they still have it. It's not destroyed. It's not under seal. They still have it, and anybody can look at it. You know, Emma Bundy's attorney got up, and and, uh, and the question was, you know, he wanted to suppress the Bundy Ranch and Ammon's account because they had both been distributed without having been scrubbed. Now, this is when Judge Anna Brown asked the, uh, the government, I want to know who got the discs and when they got them. The government has had three opportunities to get this record, and they still haven't gotten it. Now today, and Judge Anna Brown gave them yet another extension to explain how this information got out of the government's control, who got it, and uh, who was responsible for disseminating it. This is their fourth opportunity to do so. And uh, I just got a quote from Per Olson before I was able to retrieve my camera from the car. And he says, if they didn't seal the Facebook data on time, the government did not live up to the condition of the warrant, and the evidence should be thrown out. Now, folks, we live in a country of laws. We, the people, are expected to live up to the letter of the law. I think it's only fair, right, and proper that the federal government be expected to live to the letter of the law as well. They shouldn't get any wiggle room because you know damn sure we wouldn't. So here I am once again at the federal courthouse in Portland, Oregon. We'll be coming back to you whenever we get a break from the courtroom, let you know the latest updates. And uh, this information will be shared on the Truth is Viral Network, the Guerrilla Media Network, and on the Truth Denied. I want you folks to spread it everywhere, okay? Because there is one way, one way that we can get justice for these men. And that is to make sure that they receive a fair, honest, and open trial. After our court proceedings, I, um, they came up to Pete Pantelli and his attorney. The attorney, or excuse me, the prosecutors did. And they basically whispered in the Pete Santilli's attorney's ear and told them that they were dismissing the charges. And the attorney was very surprised and told Pete. And then they stood up and shook his hand and said congratulations, and that was it. Pete Santilli has been in uh, jail now, incarceration, for uh, seven and a half months. And they just, you know, say congratulations. But I will say this. I, I, I have to recognize that what happened today was a direct answer to our prayers, to all of our prayers. This is exactly what we've been praying for, that the Lord would get involved and that he would make something happen. And, and that's exactly what happened. And it's amazing. And so we might want to say, oh, you know, the prosecutors are horrible. The FBI is horrible because of the information that they're giving the prosecutors. But really, at the end of the day today, we need to be grateful for the Lord and for the blessing it is to have Pete at, uh, free from all these charges. And uh, we hope that they'll see that the truth 
is that all of us are uh, not guilty, that we made the right decision to stand up for our neighbor, that we made the right decision to bring attention to uh, great abuses that are happening to uh, good American families. And uh, it is our duty and our right and our obligation to stand up for our neighbor and to obey the Lord in that. And so um, we are innocent, and uh, I, I pray that uh, the Lord will continue to show forth his hand, and uh, we will be free soon, all of us. And I'm so grateful for Pete. I want people to know he is a good man, and he stood strong. And I'll say one thing before I lose you. He had a plea two weeks ago where they would have made it a misdemeanor, and he declined that plea. This is a breaking news alert. Breaking news now. Great news for Pete Santilli. Yes, the charges have been dropped against him in the Oregon refugee standoff. They state that, yes, federal prosecutors have dropped the charges against Pete Santilli. They state he's a self-proclaimed journalist, which attended much of the Malheur wildlife refugee standoff. They state the trial against other occupiers is set to begin this month. They write that Santilli, a 50-year-old internet talk show host from Cincinnati, claimed he never occupied the refuge and was simply there as a journalist. Santilli claims he stayed at the Silver Spur Motel rather than the refuge. And that's a fact. That's a fact. We were actually in communication with him during that time. He did stay at that motel. Uh, There may have been nights where he didn't go back and there was something going on. He was covering it, so he was bringing us coverage of that event. Quote, the government has decided that the, this this is the good news, quote, the government has decided that the interests of justice do not support further pursuit of these charges against Santilli court documents filed on Tuesday read. It says Santilli will, however, unfortunately, this is where, this is the bad news, is he will be extradited to Nevada, where he faces charges in connection with Cliven Bundy's standoff with the feds in April of 2014. Now, I should point out that Pete Santilli, one one of the main pieces of evidence that is being presented at every single hearing with Santilli is an interview that he did with me on this very news channel regarding what was going on at the Bundy Ranch in Nevada. So I read the documents, I read the indictments, my name comes up a couple times because he was interviewing with me, he was acting as an agent of the press providing news and information. Now, they're using his, his reporting against him. They're using his freedom of the press, his freedom of speech against him, citing that he was inciting uh, some sort of violence against the government. Now, of course, you know, as a journalist, he has a responsibility to report what's happening there and a responsibility to report what is being said and what, you know, what, what's happening on the ground there, right? What, what are the Bundys asking of the American people? Comes on my program and talks about it. Now, I, I'll have to say, yes, I do think, first of all, Pete's got brass balls, all right? He's got some serious brass balls to jump into some of these places like he does. Now, uh, in some cases, I think, you know what? He gets a little bit too close. And that's, I mean, that's too close to the story. Now he became part, he became the story when he got arrested. So the reality is this. In the, in the type of journalism that we're in, okay, I, I am a, I, I'm a, Liberty journalist, I'm a, uh, I do have opinions on pieces, and that's why I present news articles, and then I give you my opinion on them, all right? So I have an angle, I have a bias. My bias, though, this is where it gets interesting. My bias is that I want everyone to be free. I want the government to be off of our back. I want, to, I want us to be left alone to make the decisions that we want for our friends and our, and our families to live in, a, in an open and beautiful free America, now, people will say, well, you're biased. You're, you're just some redneck, and constitution, gun-waving. No, I, I'm just an advocate for liberty. And that's what Pete was doing down there, advocating for liberty and the right for people to do what they're doing 
and using the press as the, as the sounding board to get the message out to advocate for that. Now, so it's good news that he is, uh, that this, or this story in Oregon now being dropped, but uh, the bad news is he's going off to Nevada now to face more charges. I have a feeling, and I'm praying, that those charges will be dropped too that the Nevada feds are going to take a look at what happened in Oregon and go, okay, looks like, you know, we should just drop the case. Then P can, you know, go back to reporting. He can get back on his saddle, and he can keep, uh, keep bringing the truth to the American people in his shock, jock, bravado way. And we look forward to that day when Pete is out. All right, guys, this is huge news Finally, a little bit of glimmer of light in all this, all this tyranny and corruption we see. Long way to go, but here's the huge news. In Oregon, all the charges were just dropped against Pete Santilli today. Now, I spoke with Deb Jordan, and there was a motion filed, and all the Oregon charges, all the Oregon charges are dropped against Pete Santilli. Now, look, sir. Cause the dream never said to the dreamer Why did you dream me this way? And the pie never said to his this, this isn't a win, we got tons of people still suffering in prison all over the nation. We got trials starting this week in Oregon. We got massive, massive corruption going on. No law in the courts. And of course, the charges against Pete Santilli against all of them are completely bogus, but to have the organ charges dropped is huge. Praise God. Now, does it mean that these judges have any any sense of law and constitution? Does it mean does it mean that the prosecutors have any morality or standards? No, not really. Uh, it means that they had such a ridiculous case that they probably decided they didn't want to fight it. But for whatever the reason, right? Listen, God can tear down the walls of Jericho. But I also talked to Deb, and this is one, this is one of the reasons they haven't been making a lot of posts and she hasn't been putting out a lot of content and such lately because they've been working working like crazy behind the scenes. And so with this motion pile, here's what happens. But here, here's how bad it is, all right? Here's the negative side of this. Now that the charges are dropped in Oregon against Pete Santilli for reporting, now they're going to take him to Nevada where he faces a whole slew of other charges. So it's like one down, but a whole bunch of stuff in Nevada to go. And so there's lawlessness everywhere. It's not an isolated incident. It's all over America. Schaefer Cox, Jeff Winehouse, political activists from all factions and religions and, and people of all beliefs from all sides being abused. It's everywhere, guys. There's no law in our courts. And occasionally a wisp of justice floats through there. But more importantly, there's an appeal to heaven and God can intervene on our behalf. Now, that's what's going on in Oregon today. And I want to talk about standing up. I want to talk about how people can stand up with the trials coming up in Oregon. Now, here's the thing, guys. People need to show up. It's not that we can we can fix a lawless court. The courts are gone. The law is gone. This system, we have to oppose it. Here's what I want to address. There's the goes down, right? When they come for us, they'll take it out of our cold, dead hands. Listen, 3% militia. We're all the militia. It doesn't mean you wait until you got to go to the front lines and we have a bloody revolution. We're trying to avoid that.